Hello everyone. So this is my third time trying to re record this review. I am reviewing this watch right here. The G-Shock GA100L 7A. 7A is just the color. The GA100L is the series. And I have it compared. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison with the DW5600, which is on the left. But uh, I'll leave that for later. Um, if I sound a little sick, that's because uh, I have allergies, and if you don't know anything about me, I have really, really horrible allergies. So, to counteract that, I've taken two different allergy medications, and I have uh, tissues in my nose, so I don't drip all over the phone. <laughs> so, if I sound a little weird, that's why. Um, so, let's just start off with my overall impressions. So, first of all, let's just look at how big this watch is, because that's just going to immediately make people not want to wear it, okay? I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. And I actually think that this GA100L is the perfect size for my wrist. Get a little bigger out. I mean, it is pretty big, but I definitely prefer the size of it to the DW5600. I think the DW5600 is a little small in comparison on my wrist. Um, but the DW5600 would definitely be better if you were wearing like a suit or a long sleeve shirt or a jacket or something where you want to slip underneath. This thing is not going to really slip underneath your jacket. I mean, you can try, but it's, it's, you're going to have to fumble with it every time you want to put your sleeve up or down. So that's the first thing is just the size. So if you don't want to watch that's this big in comparison to the DW5600, then I would just immediately say get the DW5600 instead. But ignoring the size, let's just go down the specs of this watch. So I'm going to just take it off so I can mess with it a little clearer. All right. I actually had a video where I had it off and I put it on, and I think I flipped the camera upside down. So I'm not going to edit this video, so who cares. So what can this watch do, first of all? Well, this thing is indestructible, okay? I've had this since uh, Christmas 2021. It is now uh, Easter 2022. And uh, until I got this guy right here about a week and a half ago, I wore this watch constantly for four and a half months, that entire period of time. I did not take it off. I showered with it on, I slept with it on. I went to saunas with it on. I worked out with it on. Where's another thing to do? Oh, if I wanted to wash it, I just took the thing and I submerged it in a cup of water with soap. This thing, I banged it into a million door, no uh, door frames. I mean, it is pretty big. That's kind of a design flaw, but it's still alive. There's nothing wrong with this watch. I've had no fear slamming on the table just now. In fact, I did that in the other recording, and I'm doing it again. This watch is just totally fine. You cannot damage this watch. Um, after wearing it that whole time, there was some discoloration in the white band. And uh, that's another thing that lots of people get off on. This is not... It's not really white. It says it's white. The picture looks white. It's, like, gray. Um, I actually like the color, so I'm not going to complain about that. But the image is a little misleading. And there's other things about the image that's a little misleading, but let's just call it gray. So this gray band, it tends to discolor, but the thing is that all I did was, again, I submerged it in some water with some with some Dawn, and then I scrubbed it with a sponge, and, like, there's no scratches. There's no, barely any discoloration. It won't even show up on the camera with the, the color gradient of this camera. I mean, it looks brand new. I mean, there's some spots on the inside which I didn't scrub, which look a little dirty. But that's just because I didn't scrub it. Those would come right off. And the glass has this nice raised edge around it. So, like, there's basically no way you're going to scratch this glass unless you hit, like, an exact corner of a desk with it, right? So, this thing is going to survive anything. I mean, I've dropped it. It's fine. Now, when it comes to... If, if, if all you want is an indestructible analog watch and you don't care about any of the other features of this watch, I would say go for this in a heartbeat. It's a great watch, Okay. Now, here's where it kind of falls apart, all right? The first thing, I'm going to talk about something I like. So if you want to adjust something, let's go to a different mode. Let's go to stopwatch. So if you're in the stopwatch mode, and yes, it's hard to read. If you're in the stopwatch mode, like if you hit the forward button, it starts the stopwatch. If you hit forward again, it stops. If you want to reset it, you hit adjust, right? I think this is standard on all the G-Shocks, but the problem with this G-Shock is that this button up here, the reset button, is recessed compared to the other four buttons. So it's actually very hard to press. And this watch is not recessed at all. All four of the buttons are the same. 
So it's very easy to operate this watch. If you know how to operate it, it's a little complicated. If you know how to operate this watch, it's very easy to do, and you don't have to get like like a like a stupid paper clip or a pen or something. You don't have to get a pen or a pencil to press the buttons on your watch with this one. This one is great in that respect. Now, uh, what does it cost? That's probably important. It, the MSRP is $99. Uh, it was bought for me as a gift for Christmas for $75. So for $75, it's pretty good, but still, that's like twice the price of this thing. So keep that in mind. Um, now, I the reason I bought this watch, and I did not initially buy this watch, was when I bought this watch, I thought I would hate this one. Why? Because I wasn't yet committed to having a digital watch. I, I, it didn't feel like it didn't feel right to me. It was like, why would I wear a digital watch? It's so tacky. That's so 80s or 90s, you know. But the thing about this watch is that every time I use this watch, I try and use this digital display. Like right now, it's showing the time through 13. Uh, and the problem is, this digital display is just inherently easier to read than hands. I mean, some people can just like look at the hands and be like, oh, it's 313. I'm not one of those people. I try and read this display. And the problem is that these hands will be in this way of this display from 7 to 9 p.m. or a.m. and from 35 to 45 minutes every hour. So a good chunk of the time, at like more than a sixth of the time, this is very hard to read. So if you're reliant on this digital part and you want the analog for show, then keep that in mind. And the other thing is that this is a negative display. Notice that it's white characters on a black background. It looks much better in the picture, but notice that first of all, this display is much brighter than this display. Why? I don't know. It was like that from the from when I opened the packaging. Second of all, it is a little easier to read in person than it is on any camera or picture, but it's... It, compared to this, it's night and day. This watch, I can read it from pretty much any angle, and I know exactly what's going on. And this display is very hard to read uh, in comparison. It's fine. I was able to read it for four and a half months with no problem, but it is a little difficult in comparison. If you don't have the best eyesight, then uh, don't get a negative display. They have watches like this that have a positive display, but again, when I bought this watch, I never would have bought those because like the black on the white just looks kind of tacky and old school and like kitschy. So why is it not focusing? Um, so that's why I bought this watch. This is like a fence sitter watch. This is like I want to have a digital watch. I want to have a quartz watch. I want to have a chronograph, but I don't want to have a fully digital G-Shock. So they so. It's kind of that middling watch, where, but the problem is that like the whole design of having both is kind of flawed. You kind of just want it to either be analog or either be fully digital, and that's why I eventually decided like digital better and got the digital watch. So what can this watch do? Um, oh, one more thing with the visibility. There's a horrible, horrible flaw with the visibility of this watch, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you by turning off the lights. All right. Now it's dark. Can you read that watch? I, well, this, it's not even as dark as it could be. You actually can read that watch in this light. But let's imagine it was a little darker, right? There's a light button. I think it's this one. That's the light. Notice that you can't read any of the displays. You can see the hands, but you can't read any of the displays. It's not backlit. It's not electroluminescent like this one is. So you can't actually read the time unless you just read the, the analog hands so you when you at night in, in, in the dark if like you're waking up in the middle of the night you can't tell what the date is you can't tell what the seconds are you can't tell the day of the week you can only see just the basic analog hands okay compare that to the dw5600 let me shift this on my wrist a little bit compare that to this watch where how am i going to do this i'm just going to take it off Compare that to this watch, where if you want to see the time at any time of day with this guy, boom, it's like blindingly bright. Like you can see every single character on this at any time of day. You can see the, the day of the week, you can see the date, and you can see the time down to the second. So if you're going to be reading a lot at night, this watch is much better, and you can hold it too, so you can just sit there and read it, and then as soon as you let go, then it goes away. This watch at night, much better. And I have a problem where I wake up at like 5 a.m. So I need to see what time it is. And this watch, that was one of the main reasons that I didn't, I got rid of this watch. Okay. 
Now when it comes to features, this watch has a bunch of features. It has, if you hit mode, you can switch between the features. So this is the regular time. There is the stopwatch here, where you can start, stop, and reset. There is the, the timer, which I've set to 30 minutes, because this is a good general time. And it ticks down, it's like, it's like a little kitchen timer. And you can reset that by holding adjust. Mode switches the, se uh, the section, so this would be the set hours uh, up here. This would be minutes, so if I wanted to go down minutes, I hit reverse. Up minutes, I hit forward. And then you hit adjust again, and there you go. You can start it, and stop it, and then reset it. Okay. This is the world time. So you can have a second time set on this watch. You could sw switch between them. I don't know how this works. It's pretty complicated to get it to work. Just if without the guide, like I would not recommend trying to figure that out without, unless you have the guide right next to you and you're willing to learn how to do that. So I wouldn't rely on this feature. And then you have the uh, the alarms. Oops. Uh, I think I just switched time zones. Uh, who cares? Then you have the alarms. And see, here's where the problem comes in. I can't see what the alarms are. Right up here, it'll tell you which alarm you're looking at. So this is like alarm one, two, three, four, five, and five is a snooze alarm, and then this is whether or not you have uh, hourly signals on. But right, you like I can't read that. I can't operate this because the hands are in the way. So that's something to consider. And then back to the time. So the negative display is a huge negative. Is a huge negative, ironically. You can get different colors of these that have a non-negative display. I would recommend that if you want to get this model, don't go for the ones that have the white on black or like, especially not the brown on black. That would be like completely illegible. But like, how do I feel overall about this watch? This is a reliable, great watch if you like analog watches and you're not really concerned about the digital features, like the digital screen and the digital stuff. If you just want an analog watch that's got, that's kind of busy, that's got, that's rugged, I would say this is a great watch to buy. But in pretty much every respect, when it comes to practical functionality, this watch is better. First of all, this costs half the price. This is, was $45 with tax. This was like $80 with tax, right? So this is half the price. It has a better light. It has a much more clear display that you can actually read. Uh, it, it, the, the only thing that makes this watch bad is, again, I think I mentioned that in this recording. Oops. <laughs> uh, this button is impossible to press. Like, I'm going to try and press this button. And you'll know it works once this flashes. Uh, uh, fuck. Uh, wow, okay, that one worked. But you look out, like, I have big fingers. Like, my fingers are, like, big. And I cannot press this button. Like, I'm not even going to try. I'm going to, like, press this with a stupid pencil. Uh, this is kind of, like, juggling right now. Who cares? This watch, I would highly recommend this watch over this watch. If you just want a practical, functional watch with all the G-Shock features that's easy to read and has all the same features, the only thing that this one doesn't have, that this one has that this one doesn't have is I don't think this one has world time. It doesn't have time zones. You just set it by hand. But considering how annoying it is to do the world time and set the two different time zones and like finding a time zone close to where you live. And then I live in a place that doesn't have daylight savings time and the rest of my time zone has daylight savings time and my city is not in here. So I have to actually just manually adjust it to not have daylight savings time. Anyway, it's kind of a pain in the ass. I'd rather just set the time and then adjust it for daylight savings time by hand. So anyway, what is my final consensus? This is not a bad watch. I gave this watch a four star on Amazon, even though I gave it a one star for legibility. And I gave it a three star for, what was the three star for? Oh, the one star for the backlight and three stars for legibility. That's what I gave it. But like in terms of like reliability, this is a five star watch. And that makes up for a lot for me. And everything that, if you know what you're getting, this is exactly, you're not going to get ripped off if you know what you're getting. But the problem is knowing what you're getting, and the pictures sometimes lie and make these displays look a lot brighter than they are. So, my final consensus, by this watch, not this watch. 
And uh, I'll do a re dis uh, review on this one. The only reason I haven't done one yet, and I'm, why I'm not going to do one for a while, is because I want, I've worn this one for four and a half weeks, uh, four and a half months. So I want to wear this one for about at least a month before I really give it a review. And I, the next watch I'm going to buy after this one, I've pretty much planned out as the DW290, which isn't even a G-Shock. And that's because it basically has the exact same display as, as this um, DW5600, except it has an easier button to press. So I've heard. And the same, like, pr protection. Maybe a little less shock resistant, but who cares. So, yeah, that's kind of, like, where I'm at. Like, I would say this one is third place of the three. This is the second place and maybe tied for the DW290. I haven't figured out yet. The DW290 might be better. So I hope that was useful. Um... And yeah, expect more uh, Casio watch reviews, because I love Casio watches, and I'm going to try and review uh, at least one a year. <laughs> so look out for that. Uh, thank you, and have a nice day.